uh, I want to address the the thread that we're having in Master Heart right now, which is how um, you know somebody wrote that. Oh, do you guys do you guys do free um, master classes to launch your programs? Because that seems to be the in thing these days, um, and the master class is really kind of a thinly veiled sales pitch for the program. All of us have, well, some of us have have been to those kinds of things before, and um, you know they. Uh, the ones that are really salesy are like they spend 25% uh, of the master class building up their credibility, whether it's how great I am and look at these wonderful client, you know, success stories that are just 1% of the program or 5% of the, of the people actually achieve these things, whatever. It's like 25%, 33% of it is just building up credibility. And then 33% of it is giving some like juicy tip, <laughs> juicy, juicy tip that goes, whoa, wow, that's interesting. And then 33% uh, of, of, of the master class is selling them on, well, this is why you should join our wonderful program or whatever. So that's a common tactic, not just these days. Back in my day, when I was getting started, back in the stone ages, uh, but no, really back from 2009 to 2012 slash 13. So for several years, I was doing free webinars slash teleclasses slash teleseminars. It was back then, it wasn't free masterclasses. The term back then was free webinars, tele, tele, uh, teleclasses, teleseminars. I was doing them very successfully. I was a great salesperson. The formula I told you was just about right, 33, 33, 33. And um, yeah, I was actually so good at doing it that my colleagues asked me to teach them the method. My clients asked me as well. I uh, ended up teaching something called the webinar method. Uh, and, and any of you watching this, you may have known me from those days. So I was a, a free webinar expert back in the day because I was really good at converting people. My, one of my best months was um, $70,000 in a single month personally out of two webinars. I did two webinars that month and I earned $70,000. The next month was, was a very disappointing month. I think the next month was like $30,000. And the following month was a so-so month, $40,000 or $50,000. So I was really good at doing this and I was earning a lot of money doing it. But then, as you can imagine, <laughs> yeah, my conscience got to me a little bit because I, I was basically... I was basically like, okay, if, if, if 50 people attended my webinar, and only five people bought my $2,000 program or 10 people bought my $2,000 program in that webinar, I was like, yeah, the other 40 people. I, in my mind, I was like, ah, oh, they're tire kickers. They're non-ideal clients. I write them off. And so the danger, of, the danger of using a single event as a sales call that isn't promoted as a sales call to the audience that's the key. These days, if I'm going to do something like this, I would say, hey, I'm launching MasterHeart again. It's starting out my one-year program. I'm going to do a webinar that tells you what MasterHeart is. You can ask me any of your questions. I'll give you the framework for kind of what underlies MasterHeart so you kind of understand the, the overarching journey we're going through. You might get something out of it, but please come if you're interested in the program. And checking it out. It's kind of like, um, and by the way, uh, before this career uh, of, of being a business you know, you know, teacher or whatever, I was the director of admissions at a business school. So I was leading intro evenings to people interested in business school. So you can see where I got some of these skills, right? So like, like people came, I set up a wonderful evening where a couple of popular professors would speak and, and uh, I would, you know, tout the program and have a couple of alumni. So you can see where the webinar method came from, right? As admissions, ad admissions, uh, you know, presentations for, for business school. So, um, but we touted it as come and find out about this MBA program. It was very transparent. So we felt really good about putting our, our sales pitch out there and, and you know, we had hors d'oeuvres and everything like that. So now even with a free webinar, there's no hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> it's like, number one, they didn't know it was a sales call, right? The way I was doing my free webinars back then. Number one, they thought it was a wonderful class that's gonna teach you about social media basics and everything like that, right? So they came and ready to learn social media basics with pen and paper. 
And then only a third of it was giving like, on Facebook, be sure you do text only posts. Okay, well, like, what the hell does that even mean? <laughs> like, it's all you're gonna tell me, you know? And so, and now I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even give that kind of tip. I kind of gave a, my teaching was really why they should learn social media my way. It was really the why learn it my way was the teaching so-called because that was what got people to buy the program also. All right, so the free masterclass these days is kind of using that same tactic, right? It's like, oh my God, I'm gonna learn something wonderful from this expert. That's what it's touted. You go there, there's no hors d'oeuvres <laughs> and it's actually a very cleverly designed sales pitch. Now, some of the very heart-centered math free masterclass teachers might be, might be, uh, might be doing 90% teaching and only 10% selling. And that's very generous of you, very kind. But then what happens is you're quite disappointed that very few people bought. Because how can you expect to have a 10% sales call and have lots of people buy or enough people buy? Of course, it's not gonna happen. So guess who's put disappointed now? You're disappointed, number one, as the one who's teaching the free masterclass. And number two, probably at least a quarter of the people or maybe even up to half the people there feel a little bit uneasy that you seemed a little bit tense throughout the master class because you were waiting for the, the other shoe to drop or they didn't know there was another shoe, but you were waiting for that last 10% to like sell them and hoping that they would join. And so there was something off about your energy that day. They probably a half of the people can sense it, even if they can't put their, their finger on them. Something, something is not quite the same with George today. Like he's not this typical kind of, kind of generous video that he would give kind of feel. You know what I mean? So uh, I feel like it's kind of a lose-lose for everybody. <laughs> One, you don't really make that many sales with 10% selling or even 20% selling is not enough. It really needs to be 33% building up your credibility, 33% selling the program, and 33% teaching that's really setting the framework for the program. So therefore, why don't we just call it a free intro evening? Why don't we just call it, I'm launching this membership, really excited by it. And I know, and here's the key, I know that only those of you who actually already know, like, and trust me are going to sign up. So first, if we make that assumption, oh, we can relax our shoulders and go, oh, got it. I'm not trying to convince somebody who doesn't know who the hell I am and going like, this is like, who's Amy? I don't know who Amy is. And you better, you better do a good job of teaching me something and selling me at the same time. That's so much pressure for you, Amy, and so much pressure for them. It's like now I have to, now I have to loosen my arms and actually like you in a single hour or 90 minutes. I have to loosen my arms and get to like you and decide to invest in a years-long program with you in a single hour. I don't even know you. You want me to do that? Do you see, do you see the, this is where, People don't think these things through. Like, what's the relationship going? What's, the, what's happening with the relationship here? And so I say, go ahead, do the free webinar. Just let it be for your true fans. And yeah, you don't have a big list. Maybe you have, but here's the thing. So let me, let me, let me get to the bottom line and like step-by-step step here. Use what I call the circles of enrollment method. And uh, and I'm going to reference another video that I do, and you can learn more about that. But the circle, in, in short, the circles of enrollment understands that for a program that's longer term or higher ticket, more investment, it's not for strangers. Strangers need to be warmed up with your free content, and you shouldn't try to warm up somebody and sell them in a single hour or 90 minutes. Yeah, the internet, big internet gurus who are typically guys right? Try to do that. Try to do high converting webinars, which was me. I taught this stuff back then. And I did convert a few strangers, but it was just a gross experience for a lot of the people there. And no wonder I don't, I had to, when I, when I finally followed my conscience in 2014 and just br burned everything down and started over in 2014, I basically, I did have some people that I start that, that still stayed with me, but it's like, I had to build a new audience again. I had, to, I had to finally be the George Cow that always wanted to be George Cow, but didn't know that I could be, you know? And so, uh, so the bottom line, circles of enrollment, okay? So it's like, this program is for the people who already kind of know what, I'm, what, I'm, what my framework is. They've been benefiting from my writings or my videos or my podcast over months, 
if not years. And maybe some of them, Amy, you said earlier, some of them are already your clients, but they just want ongoing support. Perfect. So these are for you. Those are for you. It's for you fans. All right. And if you're interested, come and let me answer your questions about this. So in other words, you've got to talk up your program. Like, don't be shy about your program. you got to talk it up. And by the way, it might be somebody who just got to know you last Thursday and they liked you on first get-go. And they actually are wanting to consider this because they're, they're, they, they like you, number one. They just met you a few days ago, but they like you. And they actually want the help that you provide in this program. So step one, talk up the program. Don't just talk up a free masterclass that is sly, is a sly way to sell on the program. Talk it up. Aren't you proud of your program? I hope you are. You've developed it in a way that you believe in it. I hope you believe, you believe in your program. So why not believe in it publicly? Right? Why not talk it up and say, this is, this is going to be a great program for those of you who want this arc of the journey. You understand why this journey is important. And you, you would like my support in this journey, my presence. Uh, as you take this journey, my support. And so this program is for you. Talk it up, be proud of it. Number one, step one. Step two, for those of you who want to ask, ask some questions about it, or you just want to hear about the arc of the journey that this program goes through, come to this intro call, come to this intro webinar, and I'd love to answer questions. I'll give you that arc of the journey. You might even learn something. So here, <laughs> you see, we flipped it. Instead of, I'm going to teach you something I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to sell you. I'm going to try to get much. Now you flipped it to say, I'm going to sell you on the program. For those of you who are interested, that's the purpose of this. And you might even learn something. Who knows? Right? So, so now it's transparent. It's authentic. You can be very vigorous about selling the program or not selling, but in terms of like talking up because you believe in it and you're answering questions. And if, by the way, step two, right? Step one, talk at the program. Step two, create that intro evening or intro session, uh, intro class, uh, not class, intro webinar to answer questions. But before they show up, you should have prepared some questions that you want to answer in case nobody has any questions because people usually need you to suggest questions before they have questions. So th don't pretend that, well, Sarah asked, you know, so you don't have to do that. Just say, okay, so I don't see any questions yet, but I'm gonna answer a question that I think you should be asking which is how long is the program? Or which is, is the program right for me if I am going through this right now or if I'm looking to, to, to do that? Is it right for me? So I'm gonna answer this question. You see what I mean? So, so it's all very transparent. It all feels good. And, um, and your audience will feel good because they showed up for this very thing. Now, circles, so talk at the program, do, schedule a, you know, a free webinar about it uh, and prepare some questions in advance that you wanna answer. And three, use circles of enrollment. And, and again, I'll give you the video for that. But in a quick nutshell, circles of enrollment means that you make special invitations to your inner circle first to say, before I let other people say yes to this, before I let other people join, there are, you know, there are spots that I've saved to, to see if you want them. Let me know by Friday because otherwise I will be letting people know next week. So let me know by Friday. Okay, so that's one circle. And then the next circle, so that might be your like current clients. Hey, Amy, before I let, you know, the rest of, you know, my students know about this, um, you, you get one of the spots if you want it. Totally up to you, right? Let me know by Friday. Great, okay. And then the next circle is your, uh, your mid middle circle, which could be, uh, you know, depending on how many circles you have, like some of us have like, you know, current clients is one circle, past clients is a, is a bigger circle. And then my students of my courses is, is, a, is a bigger circle yet. And then my email subscribers is the next circle. And then my social media audience, right? And then Facebook ads, the cool audiences is my, you know what I mean? Like, like you could have multiple, but each circle gets a special due date for when to respond before you allow the next circle to say yes. Does that make sense, Amy? Let me know if that helps. Yeah, okay. All right, so, um, so, yeah. Can I ask a question? Oh, sorry. Please, go ahead, Joe, hi. Hi, <clears throat> it was actually me who posted that in the- Yeah, um, Joe, thank you. In yes. the group, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so I think I just didn't, when I did it, I didn't, there was nothing sticky about it for me. You know, I was yeah. the sort of 
five percent sales but there's nothing sticky about it for me it was kind of I was more just really exploring sharing some of that content in a group format yes, yes so it was so the resonance of it felt really good and clear yes um but it was out of line with then any sales objectives so so what what hearing you's left me the question with is okay I get going forward if I have a product and yes. go with it gusto and do all of that so I get that but there's a curiosity then around what that did do for me was you know I got so many people sign up with very little effort just you know what's wrong with doing a master class every other month for for no reason for yes. not not having to sell just to build that audience right brilliant because uh, it felt good and that's a that's a different conversation now, yeah. right now, we're, we're talking about launching a higher ticket or longer term program. And what's yeah. the strategy for that? But you're talking about just being generous with content and audience nurturing by by having a live group session with you every yeah. now and then. And that's brilliant. Yeah. I, I mean, I totally I would just call that yeah. content. I would just call yeah. that audience nurturing. Yeah. Audience nurturing. Yeah, that's yeah. what I did. But it was out of alignment with the 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 overarching objective even though that's and right. that's because that's actually because i didn't lean into the overarching objective if that makes sense you know it was just a kind of misalignment so right, i guess you, you were that's thinking good. maybe it could lead to sales maybe not but yeah i was yeah. just you know what i was just being creative and just going i'm just going to do sure. this and just explore and kind yeah. of yeah. see how i feel in my skin about it while i'm doing it and see what value everyone gets you know and i, I, and I, love and I was like oh i've got this i do have this you know maybe i should be kind of talking about that at the right. time uh -huh. um but you know i'm not attached massively to the outcome of it because That's i right. learned quite a lot from it you know good i, I love that you were we're open to experimenting with a different way of delivering your wisdom yeah. and your experience, your presence to people. And I think we all should experiment more with that. So yeah. thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Bill. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Really useful. Thanks. So Kathy, um, thank you for mentioning that, you know, you, you had just taught a wonderful uh, course to a group of people um, talking about the work that you do, um, vision portraits, et cetera. And it was, you know, giving, and it was, it was generous, and uh, you kind of forgot to pitch, and you kind of were feeling bad about it, and um, now you can let that go. When you are teaching a generous class, like I just got off before this very call, I I was on a podcast episode. I mean, someone was interviewing me, and of course, some people think, well, podcast episode, something being interviewed. Nah, that's a good 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 way to like think about my pitch and everything. No, I just showed up. I try to be as present with the host as possible. I try to have fun in the conversation. I try to I try to imagine that my my ideal audience listening and, and trying to add as much value and care as I can. And it was a wonderful experience. And of course, the audience probably is going to say, "Well, who's this person?" I I resonate, right, Kathy? As your people will say, I resonate with your energy signature. Mm -hmm. Who is this Kathy? The relationship artist. I have to check her out. So. That is now we have the separation, yeah. a healthy separation. It's <laughs> you know between church and state. No healthy separation between you know pitching and you know being proud of your upcoming program, believing in it publicly, talking talking it up because you loved and, and, and inviting specific people that you you would love to have in part of your program first, and then the second. And then on the other hand, which is most of 80% of what we do, I think, 80% you know, ish, is just showing up authentically, nurturing your audience, being friends with them, and um, being as of as much care and, and generosity as you can. And like, that is heart nurturing for you. It's for, it's for the audience. It's a wonderful way to live. And of course, you also love your programs and you love your services. You know, you should create programs and services that you really love. And that you, should, you know, twenty percent of the time, you know, one time in the month or twice in the month for some of us, you are happy to talk about it. <laughs> so yes, that's what I'm not doing. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. So there we go. But yeah, so that's that's what we need to you know kind of plan for. But thank you, thank you for bringing that up, Kathy. Yeah. 